Wayne Smith from Abundant Life Church to lead us in the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Lord Jesus, we take this moment. I believe, Father, some here have had a day. Father, I pray you comfort, strengthen, and give peace this day. I pray for wisdom and peace during this time tonight. We ask for wisdom of Solomon, but the peace of God that passes all understanding. Crown this time with your presence. Bless the hearers and everything that's said and done this night. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. It's August 21st, 2023, 530. And we'll call this meeting of the Fergus Falls City Council to order. Roll call, please. Here. Yes. Here. 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 We have a quorum. First item of business this evening is approval of the agenda, and we'll call on our city administrator, Andrew Bremseth. Good evening, Andrew. Yeah, good evening, Your Honor. Council members, a uh, couple of uh, items have been requested to be removed from the consent agenda. Uh, Council member Kwame has requested item number three. And then Councilmember Kremeyer has requested items number four, five, and six be removed for discussion. All right. And we can uh, approve that amended agenda with a motion. I'd like to offer that. I'll offer that. Thank you, Laura. I'd like to second that. I'll Thank second. Got a tough crowd tonight. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Scott. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. A motion carries. Uh, next <coughs> item, there are no public hearings, so we'll move along to awarding of bids tonight. We have a resolution awarding the construction services contract for public improvement 9504, the Aquatic Center to Tradesman Construction. We'll call on our city engineer, Brian Yuvaro. Good evening, Brian. Brian. Good evening, Your Honor and Council members. Uh, on Thursday, July 27, sealed bids were open for the public improvement 9504. This is the Aquatic Center project. At the time, we received a total of six bids were received. Tradesman Construction Inc. submitted the lowest base bid in the amount of $8,860,472. Tradesman's 12 bid alternates amounted to a total of $331,979. So the total bid, base bid with the 12 alternates, it summarized to $9,192,451. Uh, the estimates of probable construction costs for the base bid work was $7.6 million. With the bid alternates, alternates 1 through 12, they were estimated at additional $830,000 for a total combined construction contract estimate of $8,430,000. Uh, before I turn it over to Adam from GLG Architects, uh, he's, he'll be here to discuss the post-bid results and provide some supplemental information for the recommendation before you. I just want to go over... Uh, the budget for this project is uh, the voter approved local option sales tax to finance the project bonds as the current funding mechanism. Present, presently, the city has authority for a $10.8 million project. So at this time, help will be requesting upon the conclusion and discussion, we're requesting a resolution awarding the construction services contract to tradesman construction in the amount of $9,179,086. That includes the base bid, base bid and alternates number one through seven, nine and ten, and this is contention on a change order number one execution. So at this time, I'll be just turning over to Adam from JLG. Thank you, Brian. Good evening, Adam. Brian, good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, yeah, so like Brian said, um, you know, I think we have a lot of good news. Um, we looked at the bid results. For the most part, um, they were in a pretty, pretty tight window. Um, which tells us that our documents that we put out there were very complete and they were bidding apples to apples. Um, I think good news, uh, Tradesman Construction, uh, they're a local firm out of Alexandria, if you're not familiar. Um, they, uh, they were very excited about this job. It's a project that fits them very well. We work with them on about uh, four or five projects of, of similar size and scope and they're a very capable firm. Um, and uh, over the last few weeks, we've been working with them, meeting with them, um, make, betting out their bids, making sure they're comfortable with their bids, uh, but also um, having conversations about value engineering, recognizing that um, the project did come in over budget, 
Uh, but again, more good news is that there are a number of items that were included in the original bid um, that we could dial back scope on the project. So, um, uh, you know, for instance, um, things that maybe were in the drawings and specs as, as nice to haves, you know, but not necessarily need to haves. And so we've been working over the past couple weeks, really trying to identify what are those items um, and trying to identify those items that we can pull out of the project that won't reduce the experience of people coming to use your pool, right? This is an aquatics project, so we did not want to suggest taking anything out of the aquatics scope of the project. Uh, and so included in your, in your packet um, tonight, we've got uh, a value engineering uh, potential deduct list. So if you looked at that list uh, and totaled it up, um, I think we're in excess of identifying um, you know, roughly $600,000 of, of scope that we could reduce out of the project. Um, and like I said, not reduce that bather experience for people coming to use, um, to use your pool. I don't know if you want me to go through all of that list, but there's eight items that are starred. Um, you'll see those stars on the left of that, that sheet. Those indicate items that um, we are going to put in this initial change order that the contractor is pricing. So um, as a design team, we take, um, we take responsibility for where the bids came in. And so we've been doing this work and we've actually started uh, revising the drawings and specifications to reflect these items. Um, and uh, tomorrow morning, we intend to um, get those revised drawings to tradesmen to be able to put together formal pricing. And that would be where we look at um, in ensuring that we hit that $350,000 threshold. So if you looked at your budget, um, after working through everything, that is the target value that would get your project under that $10.8 million budget any questions on that maybe just maybe just for the public's sake you might want to if you could just briefly go over those eight items so yes the public yep. has an idea absolutely. of, yep. of and, what that scope um, looks like absolutely yep and, and like i mentioned we've been working really hard uh internally with our design team over the last couple of weeks trying to identify items um in conversations with uh, the low bid contractor and we also did meet with the uh, pool committee uh, for about an hour and a half, two hours, and reviewed all these items uh, with them as well. So um, item number one is uh, revision in flooring in the locker rooms. Uh, our bid documents included an epoxy floor coating, um, which is, again, a nice to have, not a necessary <coughs> to have. Um, and we could save some money if we went to just a, a sealed concrete floor finish. Um, as we're going through these items, we also um, Compared to other uh, case studies, other communities similar to yours with outdoor pools, um, for instance, Parker's Prairie uh, built a new pool not that long ago. Um, Marshall, Minnesota, we're working with them on an outdoor pool. Um, so that was a good litmus test. And Parker's Prairie, you know, they have sealed concrete. Um, locker rooms are spaces that people are in for about 10 minutes and they go on the pool deck. Um, so that one was a deduct of roughly $20,000. Item number three was some um, built-in planters uh, at the front of the building. And uh, yes, thank you, you are perfect, right on the right money. So this is the front of the building, <laughs> a rendering of what that um, design looks like. And you can see those six planters in the front of the building um, that are kind of at bench height that do dual purpose as a planter bench. Um, we target those at roughly $25,000 of savings to pull those out. Um, again, a nice to have. Um, that same thing could be accomplished with some nice benches um, or, or site furnishings uh, in that location. Item number five uh, was um, the, the concrete block in the locker rooms. We specified um, almost like a polished concrete block. You see it in schools a lot. Um, they take a regular concrete block and they grind the face of it smooth so it has a nicer finish. Um, and, uh, and that was a pretty big one. Uh, we could go from that polished block to just a, a colored concrete block, so not like gray, um, but like a, a buff or a tan, uh, and we could save roughly $50,000 on that item. Um, item number seven, this was a big one. The original drawings and specs included um, what's called an ornamental or a decorative fence around the, the whole pool deck. I think it's 
650 linear feet or something like that. Um, that's all steel members that are welded together and painted. Um, it's a very expensive fence system. Um, and uh, we looked at uh, a nice black vinyl coated chain link fence that so would still have a black appearance, be eight feet tall, and we could save roughly $120,000 um, from the welded version. Um, I live in Alexandria. I've driven by Parker's Prairie Pool about 100 times, and I've never noticed, but they have a black vinyl coated chain link fence, and it, it looks fantastic. Um, uh, number 10 uh, has to do with the canopy structures. You can kind of see in this image along the front and back of building of the building, we had some canopies for shading. Uh, the steel on that, we specified it to be both galvanized and painted. There's some redundancy there that isn't necessary um, long term, and you'll be okay if we if we omit the galvanizing, just do painted steel on both those, and that was a savings of roughly fifteen thousand um, dollars. Sixteen. This is uh, was a big one. So the the um, at the kiddie pool, if you see that kind of play structure, and then you see those three sunshades kind of around that curve, those are custom fabricated sunshades. And just for those, that three section is about $100,000. Um, so what we're recommending is that we could take that out, and then the other six square sunshades, we would relocate two or three of those to that location to still get shade where the little swim, um, and, uh, and it's a much, much more economical for those smaller ones when we can group those instead of having that kind of fancier um, custom, if you will. Um, item 19 is kind of a, um, a logistical type item. Um, in, the, uh, in the specifications, we stated the contractor needs to carry a cost uh, for a building permit, and they were carrying uh, roughly $45,000 for the building permit. I'm talking with Brian, and it being a city project, it sounded like the city can generate the permit themselves and not, there's, that fee isn't necessary. Um, so there's $45,000 savings there. And then the last one, item number 39, has to do with um, the geotechnical report for the soils out at Roosevelt Park site. Um, the report from the geotechnical engineer uh, didn't get completed until the project was out to bid. And so the design for the structural footings and foundations um, was uh, extra conservative because they didn't have that report information. Uh, and then when they got that report information, it was too late to change the design uh, for bid day, um, but we've had them evaluate that now. Um, and there's a, there can be a significant reduction of concrete, rebar, um, and labor and time there. So we have that at roughly $25,000. Any questions on any of those needs? <clears throat> Thanks, Adam. Any questions on any of those deducts? Okay. Um, I guess the last thing um, that we point out uh, in, the, in the packet that we included tonight was just to highlight um, the, the alternates that we we're recommending. So I think if you go to the last page, maybe. Um, so that one was those, uh, the canopies, I already talked about those. Uh, keep going. We'll go to the plan view. So this is the, the plan of the, the pool deck, um, just to highlight what the alternates are that we recommended taking. And overall, um, we saw that the pool bids were, were very good. So like Brian mentioned, you know, we were budgeting about $800,000 for all these alternates and combined they came in at 320. Uh, so there's a lot of value that we want to make sure you guys get um, being able to accept these. Uh, so the items included are the first on the left um, is a climbing wall that's in the deeper end of the lap pool. Um, the next one over would be the second uh, slide. So we bid that second slide. You have two slides there as an alternate. And then uh, I know it's kind of hard to see, but over in that curve there, that is the zero depth entry portion of the pool, the leisure pool. So that's where your little kiddos are going to spend the most time. Um, the four blue connected circles are a series of kind of pumps and jets that squirt up from the pool deck and the kids sit on them and do all sorts of fun things. 
those were one alternate. And then there was a couple of um, kind of leaf sprayers. They're kind of tall, like tree trunk things with some leaves that spray down. Um, there was a fiberglass kitty slide. So that would be for maybe two to three year olds that aren't quite big enough to go on the big play structure. Um, and then I think there was one more kind of pump feature that kind of creates like a water dome. The kids go under it mm -hmm. and get sprayed and that sort of thing. So, like I said, really wanted to keep the focus for you guys on those aquatics components as that's what this whole project is about. I think that's where the, the public will see the most value. Um, and so that impacted a lot of the decision making as we try to um, narrow in a path for you guys to get this project rolling and, and make this a reality for your community. Thanks, Adam. Um, we'll open up to some questions here, but first, let's just explain this. So the resolution that's being recommend, recommended in, uh, includes a contingency. Correct. So just want to explain that real quick so yeah, the council understands that, and then we'll... Yep, yep. So um, because we need to follow the Minnesota competitive bid laws, um, in order to award the project, we need to award it for the amount that the low bidder had on, on bid day, right? That's just kind of with the with the law of states. Um, but with that, we are able to change order or deduct work out of that contract um, to save you guys money uh, on the project. So working with your team and our team, finding out, figuring out what would be the best way to achieve that and minimize the risk for the city, because we know there's um, inherent risk in awarding a contract that is, puts you above your budget. Uh, it was determined the best way to do that would to say, we can award that as long as we can save that $350,000. And um, the way to do that is, like I mentioned before, us revising the design drawings, getting that to this low bid contractor, and getting a hard <laughs> price from them. So they are going to, um, before any contract would be signed, they would generate a formal document that says, with the changes listed, we would deduct X amount of dollars from our contract. And as long as that number is over 350, um, that would get your project under that $10.8 million budget. And now, I will also say that, um, you know, in, the, in a construction project, the whole thing is about managing risk, right? Um, so there's multiple levers for you guys as a city to help manage that risk. You know, one of those is a contingency. So with this budget we've identified, there's still $400,000 in contingency for you guys. So that helps protect you from unforeseen, you know, if there's a car buried in that park or something like that. Um, errors and omissions on your design team, I'll be the first to say that we are not perfect. There will be a change order because a pipe is showing to go through a beam and they're going to come back and say we can't do that or something like that. That's part of construction. Um, so that contingency is there, but then also in the soft costs and like your FF&E budget, so that's all the furniture you're going to buy, so like the deck furniture, the tables and that sort of thing. Um, in the last couple of weeks we went through and really took a hard look at the cost of all those pieces of furniture. Um, we've got a conservative number of those, you know, because you can get cheaper plastic furniture or you can get nicer high-end furniture, right? And so there's some dollars in those soft costs as well um, that you guys can, can have as opportunities to help you manage manage the costs. So does that make, make sense? Yeah. A bit. Thank you, Adam. Yeah. And with that, we would, let's look to get a resolution on the floor and then we'll open up for discussion. I'd like to offer that resolution. Thank you. Scott? I'll second. Tom? Second. Thank you. Questions and comments for Adam? I know the Angela, Bridget, and Caroline from the Aquatics Committee is here. If you guys have anything that you'd like to add? A lot of, a lot of hard work put into <laughs> coming to this moment, right? I guess I don't know if I really have a question for you, but I guess, eh, I guess I do. Um, you know, basically the, the bid is over budget. You've explained it. What is the guarantee to the taxpayer for any overruns, increase the cost of material, labor, other contingencies? You know, I guess what I'm looking at right now, as we look across the river here, we just took a $71,000 hit about a month ago. And I'm still waiting to get 
was uh, I asked for some options on that from somebody in the city here, just some ideas, what we could do to maybe alleviate that. Sure. Um, you know, like I said, you know, there's, there's processes in place to help you help you manage that risk, right? And when we put together, um, you know, a, a budget of ten point eight million dollars, we specifically put in there contingency at roughly five percent of the cost of construction, and we put it in the project budget because we tell everybody that that is money that is going to be spent on your project. We just don't know where it's going to be spent whether there's a car in the ground or, or there's a, a miss or a conflict in the documents. Um, you know, as, a, as architects, we're, we're not held to a standard of perfection, much like doctors and, and lawyers. Um, what we do is a practice, right? Nobody's ever designed the Roosevelt Park pool ever in the world, right? So this is the prototype. And, and the contingency and managing those soft costs are ways that we kind of help help control the the risk of of, of any project. So, um, you know, is there is there a guarantee? Um, no, but um, you know, I've never had a project in my 15 years where we, you know, all the contingency was spent and a project was over over the orange budget at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. so I always found a way to manage that. And like mm -hmm. I mentioned, you know, this list here, the eight things, I'm not saying our work's done here, right? So we're gonna continue to vet these other items and identify other savings that might be considerable for you guys um, to maybe look at other things to pull, pull out of the project. So. You know, I guess what I'm trying to get to too is that we wanna get the, you know, if you're gonna build it, do the best we can here. Um, you know, with these deductions that you had listed earlier, and I wrote them down here on my notes. Um, you know, what is the what is the guarantee or any guarantee on that 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 will be come off the bill? Um, who's making those decisions? You know, I, I look at it as what you had said there is nothing more than kind of like a pledge, or like you're going to pledge money to a um, a cause. Well, a pledge is a pledge. It's, it's talk. When that pledge becomes an actual dollar, yep. then that means something. Yep. But up until that point, you have nothing. So right now, I feel like we don't really have anything. Um, so once that contract is signed, the contractor is on the hook for building your project per the designs and specifications for that dollar value, right? And so to um, do your best at guaranteeing that your project is under budget, that's why we're putting, we recommend making sign that contract contingent on that first change order value because that change order is part of the contract documents. So as soon as, as, soon as that is um, proposed and over that $350,000, we can generate that formal change order document. The contract can be signed for their bid value, and then they can sign the very next document that reduces their sign, and that gets your project under, under your budget. Another the question. Is another question that I yeah. have for you too is that you had made mention when you were talking about you know you're not you guys aren't perfect like like all of us we're not perfect, but you know if there's a like you said if there's a beam in the way where a pipe is supposed to go and we didn't catch it you, you made that comment. Does the city pay for that or do you pay for that? Um, that would be a contingency item, absolutely. So why would it be if the architecture didn't work there properly? I, don't, I guess I don't understand that. Right. If it's yep. not the city's so, fault. Um, so, so you go to the car lot and you buy a brand new Ford F-150, right? right? And that's gonna, you're going to drive it off the lot with no problems, right? And if there's a recall, Ford says bring it back and they'll pay for it, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's because Ford already spent $2 million of research and development, building a prototype, testing it. Oh, here's the issues. And they built another one, fixed those. And they did that process multiple times before putting it on the street, right? Mm -hmm. So we don't have that luxury, right? And we also don't have the time um, to give you perfect documents, right? We could say, you know what? We'll, we'll check for every one of those little conflicts, but we'll have you the drawings in five years or seven years, right? Because if that's what we're gonna be held to, that every tiny little thing we need to identify and design, 
you know, it's just not feasible and nothing would ever get built. So that's why as part of these processes, that's where that contingency, contingency comes in, right? It covers unforeseen, errors and omissions in the documents. Um, and again, it's there to help protect you guys. It's in that $10.8 million budget, right? Do, do you know where that money comes from that pays that contingencies of a mistake that was done by somebody else? It comes from the taxpayer. Right. And that is my boss. Yep. And, and you that, told the taxpayers it was ten point eight million dollars, right? And that's and that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, don't don't get me wrong, guys. I'm, I'm not telling you that every time there's a problem. Well, contingency, guys. Sorry, you know that's not that's not how it works, right? So a problem comes up, we get a phone call, we meet the contractor in the field and say, okay, <clears throat> contractor, you think that needs to, this is how we fix this? Let's all look at it and make sure that one that is the best decision, right? So if something needs to be changed or moved or a pipe extended, we review that in the field, right? And then they'll <coughs> price that, right? So they send us a price, and then we take it back to our design team and say, okay, guys, is this price realistic? Are they, are they charging market value for that 15 feet of pipe to go around that beam? And then we go back to them and say, you know what? <coughs> this, this doesn't seem fair, contractor. I think you need to revisit this price, right? And then they come back. And after we go through all that, and that gets worked through, then we come back to you guys and say, hey, there was an issue in the field. This can't go through this. We vet it out. This is the best solution, and here's what it does. Yeah, the um, taxpayer is my boss, too, and they told us to go build this project for $10.8 million, and I think that's what we're doing tonight with a contract. You know what, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I agree with you on that. And yeah, we'll, we'll uh, go through the chair. I'm going to call Councilmember Rufer. Go ahead. Um, and, and just so there isn't any confusion, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is basically construction 101. This is how every construction project works for the most part. That so is correct. Yes, not like we we're reinventing the wheel yes. with this project. Yep. This is just how construction works, correct. period. Yep. Okay. Yep. You're so absolutely right. Make sure. Yep. Al, did you yep. have another comment? Yeah, I do. Um, actually, yes, I do understand that, Tom, because I know a man who builds a lot of uh, domes and arenas. So, yes, I do know that. And uh, a company. And what I would also like to ask, too, is as far as overages, you know, with these add ons, um, maybe Andrew could answer this. Is there any. Uh, increase, you know, now we've got a climbing wall. Is there an increase with liabilities for insurance costs? Um, is that going to create anything? Have you, has anybody checked into that? Your Honor, Councilmember yeah, Graymeyer, I don't have the answer offhand. Um, I assume because these are very common across the country and aquatic centers these days, they'll be covered under general. Um, liability insurance related to pools. I, I can't imagine the risk is any greater uh, by adding that specific feature or a second slide or anything than just the inherent risk of operating a facility like this. So um, I don't think that's a major concern for us. Other questions before we call for the question? Roll call, please. Perfect. Yes. Premier. No. Thompson. Yes. Rachel. Yes. Fish. Yes. 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 A resolution is approved. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Uh, there are no petitions, communications this evening. Uh, under the consent agenda, there are eight items. There's been four that have been requested to have been removed, leaving four. Uh, if anyone wants to remove items one, two, seven, or eight, we can look at those individually. If not, I would entertain a resolution accepting those four. Make that your honor. Thank you, Tom. Second it. Brent? Okay. We'll get to the open forum here in just a second, folks. I Thanks. <coughs> uh, so, consent to agenda items 1, 2, 7, 8. Roll call, please. Yes. <clears throat> yes. 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 That resolution is approved. Uh, we're going to get to items of three, four, five, and six, but the, on our agenda this evening, I don't know why, but there's not an open forum, but this is the time for the open forum. So anyone wishing to speak to the council about any item that's not on the agenda, this would be the time to do so. Feel free to step to the lectern. When will the vacant ordinance be discussed? We're getting, we're going to get that on the agenda after the open forum. Anyone open form? Seeing no one, we'll move on from that. So we will now go to the 
items on the consent agenda that have been requested to be discussed individually, starting with item number three, which is a resolution, <clears throat> pardon me, accepting the project plans and specifications and authorizing the advertising of bids for public improvement 9502, which is the demolition of the old wastewater treatment plant. And Scott, did you have a question on that? Yeah, a couple of things I just wanted to uh, clarify so that people- so Let's go ahead and really get a, we'll get a resolution on the floor. If someone would like to offer the resolution, then we can have a discussion on it. I I'll, can offer it. Thank you. Second. I'll second. Thank you, Jim. Second. Go ahead, Scott. The floor is yours. Um, this is concerning the old wastewater treatment plant, which is just below Pisca Dam on just off of the Tower Road. Uh, if you were at Fergus Brewing looking down the hill, you'd be looking down over this site. And the uh, what we're going to be doing is demolishing and getting that site cleaned up. Uh, the work to do this is a big project and so we're dividing it into two pieces to do basically the north half of it, south half of it. So that's kind of the synopsis of the, what we're aiming to do and the reason that this came to us, even though the demolition of this and the cleanup of the site has kind of been on our radar for quite a while and the city has been looking to uh, reserve some funds for this work over a course of many years. Uh, Otter Tail Power has been doing some work out in this area, and, you, and we've already gone through a couple of steps of granting them an easement for new power lines and whatnot, and the next step for what they need to do is to install a new substation that will essentially replace an old substation that's on the dairy property now. And so as I'm understanding this, we're going to have, in effect, a land swap for this substation property. And um, not quite a year ago, we accepted a letter of an intent from Ottertail Power as this all was kind of taking place. Uh, we haven't, as of yet, signed any purchase agreement or done any kind of a uh, sale of property or anything. And so I wanted to just understand this really clearly as to, you know, what we're giving up and what we're getting and then uh, what kind of easements and access we'll still have to this property because right now it's, we have to go through Ottertail's property to get to this and then uh, you know, how does that work in the future? So there's some questions in there. Maybe Brian can answer them or maybe somebody else would like to try and answer that. Thanks, Scott. Brian or staff? It, um, so if I'm, if I'm hearing this correctly, yeah, they, we granted them an easement. We still retain the property rights for the access to the <clears throat> property other than an ingress, egress easement to their property which will be coming back in a purchase agreement once we have a legal description defined, and which is basically consistent with phase one, per se, as far as a footprint area, but it's still, we're just refining what their actual space needs in, in that phase one area right now. And so the, the property that the city will gain by the time this is all done, when that old uh, uh, substation is removed out the dairy property, that's you know X square feet or whatever it would be, then they're going to get about that same amount. We've got kind of an even trade here is kind of what I'm getting at. Or are they going to get all of this phase one area and we've given up a smaller space? That's where I'm looking to see if this is an even trade. You know, I can't quite speak to what their actual space needs are for the substation design and everything, but I, I pretty think they're pretty formidable in size. So like I mentioned on this phase one, how this, it's not a linear line, the demarcation between phase one and two. This is just a boundary where we draw, draw base what's the existing structures that if we remove these in phase one, it'll be provide enough clearance, clear space for them to maneuver and build a new substation in spring of 20, spring or summer of 2024. Okay, so this is more about just getting the stuff out of their way. It's Correct. not necessarily a, a plot map of any ownership or anything no. like that. No, gotcha. Um, I think that's fine. I think this is a good thing to do. I just uh, wanted to make sure that uh, we understood how this was coming together. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Good question. Um, any other questions for Brian? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 A resolution is approved. Uh, item number four is a resolution approving the HRA levy of 0.0185% of the estimated taxable market for valuable for 2024. And this was, as well, this was discussed at committee, but um, let's look to get a motion on the floor. And I believe 
Councilman Kramer has some questions or clarifications. I, I do. And, and Michael, I we're going to get let's, get, a, let's get a quick just one <clears throat> second, Al. Um, I'll make the motion, Ben. Thank you. Second. I'll second. Jim. Okay, go ahead, Al. I would like to say say thank you to Michael for presenting last Wednesday. You did a great job. And uh, you know, we all talk about staffing, and I know this is going to be for administrative <clears throat> fees, is what you had mentioned what this is for. And you know, as we look back, you know, I'm just looking at the annual report for the city here in 2022 on page 185 we're looking at here the only entities that have gained employees are government and nonprofits as we can look at that page the one that's about a wash is even as the veterans home that's one person different I know even in our business, we can't find people to work. There's nobody to do it. So we take it on extra ourselves. You know, just because it's been, things have been done in the past, that things have been okayed, or if it's the, the norm on how something is made or built, doesn't mean we should keep doing it. I want you to, to succeed, but also too, as we keep going through taxes and ask the taxpayer to pay more things, and it's one thing after another, um, I can't support this one. But I do support you 100%. And that's the only reason why, is government keeps getting bigger. And the independent business gets smaller. And when that happens is, it's going to be really hard for the independent business person to pay for the government because there's less and less of them. So that's why I can't support it because of the taxpayer and the tax burden, what little it is. Um, that's where I'm at on that. But I do thank you for all your, your work and your efforts. Thank you, Michael. Thanks, Al. Any other questions or comments? Roll call, please. Perfect. Yes. Perfect. No. Yes. 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 No. Yes. That resolution is approved. Item number five is a motion directing staff to research how other cities allow goats for the purpose of, for the purposes we described on Wednesday morning, which was con uh, controlling weeds, weed control. Sorry, I stumbled there. Um, and to bring that back as a proposed ordinance for consideration of the council. So would someone like to offer a motion to that effect? I offer would. It. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Tom. Go ahead, Al. All right. I, you know, you guys, I, I just don't think that we really need an ordinance for it. People aren't going to raise goats in town. You know, they're not going to shelter goats in town. They're, it's an independent business person who wants to come in and provide a service for somebody in town with goats. Um, as far as liabilities, hey, it's that independent business person's liability. It's there and the, and the homeowner's liability. I just think we can streamline it and just who really needs an ordinance for it? I, that's my feeling. I don't think the city is liable for anything. I don't think that, that uh, you know, it's, in my opinion, it's no different than if you hire an independent lawn service to come in and mow your yard and, you know, a, a rock they hit a rock and it breaks somebody's window or hits somebody. You know, is there an ordinance on that? I mean, I think we can ordinance things to death too, you guys. So that's just my comment. I appreciate it. I think that there are some restrictions on what animals can and can't be. Yeah, I mean, uh, our, our city code just basically currently reads that there's no farm animals allowed in residential zones. So just allowed or? Permitted or allowed. Yeah, they're not allowed. Uh, you can't have a cow in your backyard in a residential zone so i mean that then that's why you know that's what that's what the city code says so i mean if okay. you're gonna if you're gonna allow it then you got to change it yeah i'm i was just trying to simplify it sure thank you so there's a motion and a second to have staff look into this and bring back an ordinance for consideration all in favor of that motion say aye aye, aye. aye. oppose same sign aye that motion carries uh, item number six is a motion directing staff and the city attorney to establish a vacant building registration process. Uh, someone like to offer a motion to that effect? 
I'll offer it. Thanks, Tom. I'll second. Thank you, Scott. Al, I believe this you had a question on that as well. Yeah, it's me again. Sorry, you guys. Um, no apology necessary. <laughs> I guess uh, there it comes to uh, the meeting last Wednesday when April was presenting um, the uh, ordinance enforcement person one, I guess, for the city, April. And uh, she had mentioned that it was difficult to find, you know, who actually owned or had certain properties in town that if there was a uh, enforcement issue or a, something that she had to uh, complaint and she had to enforce that, <coughs> it was hard to find, especially through an LLC. About two and a half years ago, I did dig through an LLC and I found out that, um, you know, it is hard to find who actually owns a business, but it's not hard to find out who owns the property. You know, with the property being, um, that's the person where you can talk to, and that's what's, what's given up there. And that can be found at the Ottertail County uh, website, and it's very easy to find who owns that property, and that person can be gone to. So that was what she was mentioning, that it was very difficult to... Uh, you know, find out who actually owned certain things. But I think if we go through the property uh, avenue, then that property owner, if it's, if it's a rental, they're going to know exactly how to get a hold of that person. So it's very simple when it comes to that. Um, so that's why, you know, and there again, I just think we're creating maybe more work than it's worth uh, with these other ordinances or what you would... Um, I just think that if we enforce what we have, I think it can be done that way. Just to, that's my comment. Thank you. Any comments from staff or the council? Scott? At this point, it would just be for the staff to come back with a proposed ordinance, and once we see the language of it, we could probably uh, see ways to either improve it or change it. Um, after we <clears throat> heard from April and had discussion on it on Wednesday, it seemed like there were some questions, and not that it, uh, Al's wrong in asking some questions about it, but until we let the staff do their work and come back with a proposal that answers those questions, I think we need to go through that step. So my recommendation is to support this motion and vote in favor of it. Thanks, Scott. I did, uh, I got, yeah, please, Scott. Just I know, I know Al's, Al's talking about, but for April, when, when she's got to search out, and I mean, if you've got to search for somebody, it takes time, and she doesn't have a lot. She has a lot of things on her plate, and we want her to do her job the best we can. I just think it's if you get on the computer and look at who owns that building. Here's a telephone number, and they call right. It takes a minute, but sometimes you could spend an hour trying to find somebody. You find the name, who it is, but try to find a telephone number to get a hold of them through the county. It's just, I think it's a good idea to to have them registered. And I had a call today about um, if you leave your home for or leave a building for 30 days, is it called vacant? Well, if you have, if you're going to move out, that's it would be vacant. But if you're just going someplace for a month or two months or three months in the winter time, it's it's not. It's just the vacant buildings we have in town right now. So that's I'm a favor of it. So thanks, Scott. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to you know kind of follow up with what Scott said there too. Um, you know, as far as time goes, that's what I that's what I was getting at. You start to look at who is a business owner. Um, you're going to spend a lot of time on it, a lot of time on it. But you can find out. Uh, you go to the Otter Tail County website on the tax rolls, and you'll find out exactly who owns that building. So she could jump right on that. Yeah. So I think it's a, that's a, actually a shortcut because not everybody's going to register. I agree with that. But you, to find a telephone number, it's just not always the, the corporations or whatever to find the right number to get a hold of. So that's my deal. Sure. Did, did, Mr. Lane, did you have something you wanted to say to this earlier? I think you, you asked about this. So I'm just, did you want to speak to this issue? Please feel free. <clears throat> Thank you, Martin. My name is Mark Layton. I find uh, Fergus Falls to be uh, quite burdensome on ordinances. I don't care if it's building a building, buying a lot, somebody else is building on your lot. Uh, you have ordinances on weed control now, regardless of the building's occupied or not occupied. You have snow, snow removal, regardless of it's occupied or not occupied. Will dairy land be vacant in the winter? RTC, is that vacant? Look at all the empty store doors on Main Street. What's vacant, what's not? 
I think it's an unnecessary ordinance that you're going to <coughs> push on private building owners who are already paying the insurance, already paying their real estate taxes, which we know are too high in Fergus Falls, maintain the weeds. Um, I, I just don't think the ordinance is necessary. Mm -hmm. With the ordinances you got now, and those ordinances aren't well followed anyway. Again, weeds on a guy that has a home that he lives there and they're not maintained. Weeds on a building that is occupied. So uh, just another level of a overburden the city puts on business people. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Layton. Other comments before we call for the question? We have a motion asking staff to draft a rental registration process for us to consider. All in favor of that motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Nope. That's a, I, I, there's That's one right. in, uh, for the, the no column. That motion carries. Uh, moving on to ordinance and resolutions. Tonight we have the first reading of ordinance 43, eighth series, which deals with the use of cannabis in public. We discussed this at length at our last meeting. This is just needs to be introduced this evening. All right. Thank Thank you. You. Scott. Uh, item number two is a resolution initiating public improvement 5361, the Minnesota State Active Transportation Infrastructure Program and authorizing MnDOT to prepare the final grant agreement. Um, we discussed this on Wednesday as well, but Brian, did you want to briefly recap the action before the council this evening? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Yeah, as discussed at the last committee, uh, we have a potential award of $391,960. Uh, for the ET Act Transportation Infrastructure Program. I've included the letter, of course, my letter, along with the exhibits. I believe it was, full, was it five exhibits with the project. There was a question from the committee as far as can we do more of an a la carte uh, type of selection with the funds and everything. I do have a call into the district state aid engineer. Uh, in regards to this, I have not heard yet back on that answer. So. I'll just hope for any questions you might have further on this topic. Thank you, Brian. Would someone like to offer a resolution in issue? I'll offer Public it. improvement 5361. Thank you, Scott. Brent, second. Thank you. Questions for Brian? Yes, please, Scott. I uh, wanted to point out that even though we didn't um, anticipate that any of the costs for this project would be uh, picked up by the city, initially when we heard about this, it was going to be all in the grant and all of the costs were going to be covered by the grant and then as it came back now there are certain costs primarily administrative costs that we would now be responsible for uh, from the numbers that you presented um, the 391 for the grant and then the 71,000 for the administrative and other costs total project cost be around 463,000 that administrative portion of it that 71,000 is about 15 percent real rough numbers and I think that for us to be able to get these four projects done at 15 cents on the dollar is a real good deal for the city. Now, when we had the question come up, where's the money going to come from last time? Well, on the spot, there wasn't an answer for that. But I've got pretty good faith in our finance department that in their creative looking, they might be able to just come up with the $71,000 on this one. And given that that's a strong likelihood, I really support this project. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I got Please, go ahead, Scott. Bill, if we don't come up with that money, what happens and we just don't get to do the project? Right, and we're looking at, you know, the I'm, a la carte portion <coughs> of it. We are speaking with the school some too, if um, so we're exploring those avenues as well. And then certainly we'll look at our various city funds too. So before anything's accepted on this, of course we have to have that plan laid out and before you, so you can certainly approve of that before it's a, a done deal. So. Along with the grant offer, too. Yeah. Final grant offer. Thank you. Other questions? Roll call, please. Yes. Freemire. Yes. Thompson. Yes. 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 Fish. Yes. Joe. Yes. 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 The resolution is approved. Uh, this evening, we have claims in the amount of $1,270,811.39. Is there any questions? We will direct them to it. Direct them to our I'll for the lives. resolution to pay the bills. Thank you, Bill. Second. Bill. The Jim. Thank you, Jim. Jim. <laughs> Second from Tom. Bill's our finance director. <laughs> We're going to pay the bills. Uh, uh, roll call. <coughs> roll call. 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 Roll call.
Cooper. Yes. 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 A resolution is approved. Uh, there are no board, committee, or department reports. There are no reports from staff or administrative officers. There is no old or any unfinished business. There is no new business, business that I'm aware of. Lynn, do you have any announcements? Good. No. Could I just ask a question? Um, people have been asking as far as what's going on with the union. Um, there's been kind of a, a lull in the work. I, I, people have been asking me, you know, what's going on or whatever. Can anybody shed a little light on that? I don't know if that's under, we could put that under new business or what, but. Brian, you want to speak to that? The curb and gutter, is that what yeah, you're Yeah, curb and gutter, yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, currently is the way I understand it and everything. There's some defective curb and gutter work that uh, requires removal. Uh, the contractor has done that. The, the subcontractor installing, the uh, subcontractor for Mark Sand and Gravel that's doing the install of the concrete work has uh, moved off site until Mark Sand and Gravel could do these conductors removals. We'd have a little inclement weather, but they have moved off site. To my understanding, they're coming back later on part of this week to start, uh, replace the, and finish the concrete curb and gutter. And per an email I received today from our consultant that they anticipate that starting, I'd be completed up Tuesday of next week. Following the process, then we'll start the mill, actual mill and overlay of the surfacing of the project. So. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Brian. And with that, we're adjourned.